The biggest surprise of inclusion is that it's no big deal. We live in an inclusive world. We don't live in a world where people with disabilities are on one side of the street or in one part of the community. A program that is truly inclusive allows for classes for children to take after school where every child is successful. The current existing school day is inadequate for all children. And then for children who have disabilities or special learning problems, more time is needed to, for academic reinforcement, for social opportunities. We began to notice that the types of children that enrolled in our programs were not just children that needed us for economic purposes, but they really needed a place to go so that they could expand upon their experiences with their peers and learn better social and emotional skills. And inclusion can be inspiring because when we see kids who have obviously some physical or cognitive disabilities working very hard at tests during the school day or after school, um, it shows to everyone that what's most important is what we do with what we got and not so much where we are and what we have. And to see the differences between people and to understand that that's what makes the world go around. You know, everyone's different and everybody's unique. And it's really difficult for children with disabilities to go anywhere and be free to socialize without a parent present. The children who have disabilities, you know, they're still able. They can keep up with their peers because their peers support them. Um, for maturity, for ability to develop and socialize and become an independent member of society, she needs to learn to do that on her own without me around. In a perfect world, every child would have an after-school program. The work inclusion wouldn't need to be set because everyone would be included. Initially we started because there was not a place in the neighborhood where kids with disabilities could go and partake of the after-school activities, limited opportunities that were in the neighborhood. But now we have found that it's been a wonderful component and extension of our school day. For Kids Only's mission is to uh, extend upon learning opportunities for school-aged children and to support working families. Our philosophy is not to include every, every child that, that is in need of care. Whatever it is, it could be ADD, ADHD, PDD, it could be um, a physical disability, it could be something going on at home um, where it's affecting their behavioral, social skills. So the director, the special ed person, the parents, um, the, the town itself has to lend itself and buy into that this is a good thing, it's going to be worthwhile to kids, and it's going to work. And the community as a whole is going to benefit from it. So whatever it is, we kind of throw everything together and work with family, school, community to make sure all the kids can come. It's always been a parent-directed after-school program, um, so we give parents what they want. I believe that there's huge value to what I call the triangle of success, which is the parent, the school, and the after-school provider. And the bottom line is we want children in the after-school program to be learning and succeeding, as well as having some fun. A lot of the kids in school don't have that opportunity because it's hurry up, sit at the desk, now we have math, now we have reading. We are developing wonderful humanitarians. MCAS scores don't show that. Final midterm exams don't show that. But inclusion programs, after school programs allow us to toot our own horns. And there's a lot to be happy about. It gets, um, it gets people a chance to do their homework and to just play games after school with your friends. Coming to the after school program because I get to play with my friends and do Spanish and cooking. I make robots, spaceships, and gym and smart art. Kara and Alexa, they're my best friends. And we like to play Wimba Pets. We like to play Missing Tomorrows. We like to. We, we, we sometimes. We play soccer. The first challenge we had with the after school program was money, resources. How are we going to keep the building open longer and pay for the staff that's 
necessary to operate an exciting program. It takes some time, it takes some work, it takes patience and uh, empathy and all those other good characteristics that make up a good program for people. We don't take no for an answer and we just keep writing the grants until someone gives us some money. I think at the beginning st stages of starting a program like this you need to talk to as many people as you can because it's really the experience and the people who have taken risks to make it work. Um, a lot of people are very afraid to go down that road, you know, because it is work. And we definitely did some of our own fundraising, yard sales, bake sales, lotteries, those act which activities continue. Well, I think there's always challenges um, in beginning something new and different, but uh, it was always exciting. The more people that you talk to, the more you understand that it's doable. You learn more ways to modify everything about your program. Um, you learn about more resources. The school system's a huge resource. After we had the staff, we had to make sure that we had a range of activities. We didn't want it to be just a place where people were doing hanging out or, or playing around outside. Mika has blossomed since being at the O'Hearn, including the after-school program. She has grown academically, socially, and I think her peers have grown just being around her. We have programs that come in from the community to come talk with the kids, work with the kids. We have volunteers. Um, we're a big part of the senior citizen organizations around town. Um, we have a lot of mentors from the high school that will come and work with the kids. I think the children who've been at the O'Hearn, both during the school day and the after-school program, are surprised and perplexed when they go to other situations, including after-school programs, and say, why aren't there kids with wheelchairs, Down syndrome, autism, and other issues? I mean, why don't they have, or why don't they have kids like Susie, Tommy, and Johnny? I think inclusive programs are, are very important, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure how much a lot of people understand or appreciate that. I always say start small, start with successes, um, but do it, and do it, and as we do it, we learn from our mistakes, we make improvements. Our uh, parent support has been wonderful, bringing in new ideas, looking for our community partnerships. I feel that all parents want their children to do well, and they want them to succeed. I've been around long enough to see someone who was once five with me 13 years ago, and now is in college, and had a lot of issues. I can see how successful that they've gone, and they tell you that, thank you. It was because of you.